So in this video, I just want to go over the user interface uh, for QGIS. And so this is sort of a brand new profile. So it's kind of set up with the default panels and toolbars uh, turned on. And so when we come in, we have uh, a browser, I guess, panel and a layers panel. Uh, recent projects is kind of here uh, when you first open up QGIS, once you save the project or open up a project, recent projects and news kind of uh, go hide, hide in the background kind of and only appear when you're uh, freshly opening QGIS without clicking on a project and that. So uh, what you can do is under view is you can see which panels are turned on by default. So there's a whole bunch of panels that aren't being displayed right now. Just browser and layers. Okay, this is browser here, uh, this top part, and this is layers down below. Again, I said recent projects and the news panel and project templates will uh, eventually roll into the background uh, once we start working with a project. So we don't really turn them off and on, they're just there in the beginning when QGIS first fires up. And so if I uh, just demonstrate that, I'll start with a new empty project, right? And they, they go away. And this area, you know, from this corner down to this one here, up to this corner across, this is our mapping area. This is where our map gets displayed in that. We won't ha have a feel for that until we get a base map in. But what I want to do is uh, first we'll uh, get a, base map up. So I have open street map as a built-in default. And then what we'll do is we'll turn these panels off. Right? So you can turn them off just by clicking them off and now they're gone. And now all we have is our map and that. Okay. And so uh and I'm also going to turn off all these toolbars. So this can take a few seconds. So I'm just going to pause the video and come back. Actually, before I pause, I'll show you where the toolbars are. Here they are. So there's a bunch turned on by default, but not all. I'm going to turn all these off. So we kind of start with a, a blank or empty app, and then we can bring them all on and take a look at them. So I'm back with everything turned off. Uh, we can still get layers loaded through the file menu on the top. We can't actually turn that off. So we can go to uh, layers and add layers to the map, add different types of vector layers in that. Uh, and so what the toolbars and panels do is just help you, uh, you know, get data loaded fast and work with it. And so it takes some time to figure out well, which, which toolbars are my favorite or which, which way method of doing it works well for me in that. So although we could use the file menu, uh, having the browser panel on in that, is help. So I'm going to bring that browser panel back on. So one thing at a time, so we get a real good feel for uh, what part does what. So under panels, I'm going to bring back browser. Okay. And this is a, a nice way to get data onto the map. So if you have data on disk, or you have data in different types of databases, like OGC Geo packages, Spatial Light, PostGIS, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, SAP HANA, or maybe you have some web services, OG web services, web mapping services, and uh, tile services, or maybe even have feature services as well, uh, or ArcGIS style services. Okay, so it knows how to talk to a lot of different products in that. So let's just get some data on here. Uh, and so I'm going to go down to my D drive. I have a little uh, spatial warehouse. Got some Surrey data in it, and I am looking for maybe park benches. Do I see them in there? Might be further down. Potential donation benches. There they are. So I'm just going to expand this. This is actually an ESRI file geodatabase, which QGIS knows how to read out of the gate, and. I'll go OK to this, probably because the data is in UTM. And I'm just going to scroll down here. There we go. So we have some some benches here in that. I'm also going to bring on, although my tile uh, OpenStreetMap tile service 
has a lot of the parks uh, sort of already symbolized. I'm going to get Surrey's latest version of that as well. So park and natural areas. And I'll just grab it here. And it threw them on top. Now the thing is, uh, how do I turn off and on layers real quickly? Because maybe the parks are obscuring some of the points. And that's what that layers panel does. It helps you uh, deal with that issue. So I'm going to say, well, this is kind of hard to organize my data. So the browser is good for letting me hunt data down on disk or in some database or at some web server as a service. It's great for that. But how do I need to org organize my layers better? So I'm going to again go into view and bring back the panel and bring back layers okay and that and i'm going to just drag the park benches above above the park so it looks like we're okay there actually but i might get into a scenario where uh some benches are obscured by the park boundary and so i, I want to make sure that the benches are on top now these nice things of right clicking on a layer and zooming to them I really can't do that unless uh, that type of functionality, unless I have the layer layers panel, I guess, visible or available to me. But it's just a matter of turning it back on. So these are some uh, key panels to help you find data and then organize the data on your map. In that, uh, change colors as well. So what we'll do now is start bringing on toolbars, and uh, we'll try to restore. Uh, what the original ones was. So one of the very first toolbars is the attribute toolbar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it off onto the side here. We can dock at multiple locations, but then you can actually see the toolbars because sometimes they can get obscured. And if you hover right on the little, you'll see like a little, uh, uh, like a pull area it has a bunch of little dots. If you hover there, you get the title of the toolbar. That is the attribute toolbar. Okay. Now the attribute toolbar has several tools on it. Uh, um, I can't go over each one, but the, the classic identify toolbar is there. Right now I'm gonna actually make parks the active layer, click on the park, and I get back all the attribute information on the side here uh, for this particular park. Now I'm gonna bring back another toolbar called the data source manager toolbar. So let's go view toolbars, data source manager. Now, it's sort of a quick toolbar. I'm going to pull it off again so that we can see them floating here. It's, it helps me to uh, quickly add a new shape file. So some of the functionality in here okay, is also available over here in the browser. But you might find uh, this is more works better for you as a toolbar versus a browser. But there is some overlap. I'm going to bring back the digitizing toolbar. So... Now the digitizing toolbar is really for when you're capturing data, right? So say I wanted to add a new park, uh, park potential uh, bench in that. And so I'd make the layer active and then I would start an editing session and then I could actually start adding points if I wanted to, okay? But I'll actually turn that off, toggle it off for now. So that's more for capturing data. Uh, we'll bring back the help toolbar. There's not much to that. There's just one button on there. But this is sort of restoring uh, what we had before. There's the help toolbar. It's just one little button. So uh, you might find that useful. Or it might be just as easy to go to help help content. So you might say, well, for me, I don't really need that toolbar on. Okay. I'm going to go grab the labeling toolbar. So view. Uh, Toolbars label toolbar. This was another one that was on there by default. And so sometimes you do want to label the map, uh, you know, place uh, different diagram options and that draw on top of your map, uh, redlining, some people call it. So that toolbar might help you do that. I'm going to bring on map navigation because right now to like drag the map and stuff, and you know, right now it's getting all confused about who's in charge, uh, I'll go grab that one. What if I just wanted to move it? I could pan it, right? Pan it. But sometimes it's nicer to have the toolbar doctor floating. So we'll go down to toolbars and we'll get that map navigation one. Okay. So that's a classic navigation 
uh, like if you want a rubber band zoom box, that kind of functionality. Sometimes you need to force a refresh or a redraw of the map, especially if you're talking to databases and new data is coming in. And that, or the pan tool, right? Notice that it stays lit up as it's the active tool in case you want to uh, keep panning. And there I'm zooming out. So I'm just going to move it up. I'm not going to dock these so that you can see them all. And it's easier to come over and actually hover on the end and have the little tooltip pop up and tell you what the toolbar is. When they're all docked, it's hard to tell who's who in some cases. So the next one is a plugins toolbar. Uh, again, uh, you may want to run without this. Uh, toolbars, plugins, right? Uh, and so it, it's just a, another one button toolbar, like the help menu. Uh, the next one I'll add on is the project toolbar. I actually find that one uh, quite handy, actually, because it's you know making sure you save your project and that it's nice having that particular toolbar. I like this one because I well I use it a lot. So if you have to save uh, save your current project, if you need to open up another one, create layouts and reports. It's nice having that. Again, most of this functionality, uh, a lot of it can be accessed through the file menu, but it's kind of it's an awkward feel. Uh, I much I better prefer, or I'm more, I, you know, I prefer the browser for loading data, although I could technically go layer and do it through the menu. I actually prefer the browser. And I actually find it, I haven't really found an equivalent of the layers panel to help me organize the layers in terms of zooming to a particular layer or uh, uh, changing their order in that. The other one is the selection toolbar. Now, if you're selecting a lot of features and doing some geoprocessing in that, uh, then it's a very, a very useful toolbar. It all depends what are you doing in that particular workflow in that. But again, a lot of these are turned on by default. Some might, uh, like the, the plugins and the help, because uh, I do often find that one button toolbars don't get me much further ahead than the file menu at the top. But again, to each his own, if the toolbars work for you, by all means, use them. So this is the selection toolbar. And so that's for so, uh, you know selecting features, clearing the selection, uh, adding to the selection, and that as well. Now, uh, there's one more we'll bring on that's on by default that I find very interesting, and that is the vector toolbar. Okay, so I'll turn that one on too, and then you might be go, where is it? <laughs> right, and here it is. It's a little tiny guy. Uh, it's just that it out of the box. Right, it doesn't have any tools on it. In that, it doesn't mean that if you don't. It could mean that if you install more plugins, that they will throw their tools onto this toolbar, or maybe they have their own. In that, or you can yourself go through. I believe it's settings, and then you can get into interface customization, and you can turn on enable customization and then you can decide what tools go where okay and that but I'm, that's uh, would be for a future video i just want to go over the interface uh and some classic ones that you might want to to use so definitely like uh, i like my save <laughs> one definitely like my project one use that a lot uh Definitely pan and zoom, I find quite handy in that. And how you organize it and dock them, that's really up to you in that. Uh, this one for me, uh, I find the browser so effective, I, I find myself going over to this area much more in that. I'll also fire this one up here. Uh, editing, definitely when I'm capturing data, I'm all over this particular toolbar uh, and using it in that. And I'll throw the labeling up here as well. And that, and I will then put this one over here for selecting in that. But then again, the uh, this tiny guy, the vector toolbar, which technically out of the box, doesn't have any tools on it, and the help toolbar and the plugin. Now, if you are designing plugins, it's, uh, which you can do, it's completely customizable. You can, uh, uh, Definitely make use of this. But for me, for now, if I was to set up, uh, say, a profile in that uh, as a go-to one, 
I probably don't need the vector one. It's not adding a lot of functionality to me uh, for right now. It doesn't mean that a particular plugin won't add something to it. Now I go back to toolbars, and it was the help toolbar I didn't need and the plugin. So it's really up to you how you want to customize this. And where is the plugin? There's the plugin toolbar. But these ones are some pretty stock ones you use. Again, uh, not sure how I feel on, on this particular toolbar because I have a lot of the same functionality over here on the side. And I find this much better because I'm often browsing through my directories to find stuff. So I just wanted to go over the interface a little bit. You will find that uh, you use the browser panel a lot just to get data in. And then the layers uh, panel to organize how you want the layers, which layers are on top, which ones are on bottom. And then there's uh, lots of quick features built into this where you can zoom to a particular layer uh, and that. Uh, open up the attribute table. Right, and so that functionality is hard to get to because how do you just the file menu say no, no, it's this, it's the third layer in the list that I want to open the attribute table on. It's much easier just to right click on it and open it, and then. So that's all. Like I said, that's all I want to show you uh, for now. And again, it is version dependent because I have seen this change over time. And so this is really about how three dot twenty dot three is set up a recent version of QJS. So I hope this helps you out and that's all for now.